there's a private, there's a general, there's a sergeant, and all the other levels. So if you fight with a little bitty baby demon, ain't no way you're going to be able to fight a big demon. Amen? So principalities are ranked demons. After that, it says we against powers. Ranked demons have power. So don't be surprised when somebody can prophesy to you and give you a word. Just like the men and women of God and the angels have power, demons and people that are possessed with demonic spirits have powers too. Are you all learning something today? So know that they have powers. So don't think that they don't have power. But the Bible says greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So the power that is in you is greater than the powers of the world of darkness, but they do have power. It says, against the rulers of darkness of this age. The rulers of darkness of this age means that in every age, in every time, in every sphere, there's a ruler of darkness yeah. that tries to take over. Yeah. So a ruler of darkness can be uh, a spirit of murder. Mm -hmm. It can be a spirit of drug addiction. It can be a spirit, and whatever that is, that's like a dark cloud that rules over that area. So that's the darkness of this age. And every age has a different darkness that's trying to rule. Am I making sense? So then after that, it says, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. So when people say the devil and his demons in hell, the devil's demons are not in hell. Say the devil's demons are not in hell. So when we read the scriptures and we believe the scriptures, it talks about there's three levels to heaven. There's the first level, the second level, and the third level. God lives in the third level of heaven. Paul goes on to say one day that he was caught up in the spirit, in heaven or out of the heaven. He was not sure. He wasn't sure. And then when Daniel prayed for 21 days, and then the angel came to him, he said, I heard you the first time that you prayed. He said, but I was caught up fighting against the prince of Persia trying to get an answer to you. So if he was coming from the third heaven, he had to come through the second heaven to get to the first heaven, which is the atmosphere, to get an answer to us. So understand that the spiritual host of wickedness is in heavenly places. Am I making sense? Next scripture. Go ahead, read it to 17 is telling us how to put on the whole armor of God. So there are certain pieces of armor that we put on and there are certain pieces of armor that we take up. So we put on the belt of truth. The ones that we put on, we put on and we keep on. We don't take them on. We put on the belt of truth. We put on the helmet of salvation. We put on the sword of the spirit which is the sword of the spirit which is the word so those are the things that we put on. We take up the shield of faith. We take up the helmet of salvation. We take up the sword of the spirit. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, let me start all over. Put on, we put on the belt of truth, we put on the breastplate of righteousness, and we put on the shoes of the gospel. So those are the ones that we put on. We take up the shield of faith, we take up the helmet of salvation, we take up the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So an understanding that our ultimate weapon it's prayer. The ultimate weapon is prayer. So that's the title of this message today. The ultimate weapon is prayer. And the ultimate we weapon is the only thing that you can fight and win. With is prayer. So once you get your whole armor on, then your ultimate weapon is be to be able to pray. It says in verse number 18, praying always with all prayers and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. The kingdom of heaven cannot invade earth. The kingdom of heaven can only invade earth through the mechanism called prayer. Wow. Wow. The kingdom of heaven can only invade earth through the mechanism called prayer. So if you're not praying about a situation, God cannot intervene. 
If you're not praying about a situation, God cannot intervene. Prayer is mandatory. It's not optional for spiritual growth. Wow. Yes. You have to be able to pray. And in praying, we know that we are petitioning God for things that we are seeking him for. Right. So in it, it talks about, let's go over the definition of supplication and perseverance. So it says, supplication is an action of asking or appealing for something humbly. So supplication is the action of asking or appealing for something humbly. Perseverance is doing something despite difficulty, delay of achieving success. So that means that if I ask and it doesn't happen, I'm going to persevere. I'm going to ask again. Right. And I'm going to ask again yes. until I see the manifestation of what it is that I ask for. Amen. Yes. But when we're seeking God and knowing that prayer is the only way that we can access God, we need to be mindful of how we're praying. So let's go to Genesis 21, no, Genesis 21 through 26. So God cannot go against his word. Right. Anything that God said in his word is true. Yeah. So we need to understand what God said in his word so we can be armed with the right. information right. to move forward in power and authority. Amen? Amen? So in Genesis 1 and 26, let's read that together. Ready, read. Elijah still didn't know that it was time for rain. 
And then he looked up, he said, I see a cloud that looks like a man's hand. And the cloud was coming, and there was rain. Why? Because Elijah prayed. If Elijah prayed for rain, we can pray for whatever it is that we need in our lives. Amen? If Elijah prayed for rain and it rains, we can pray and get those same results. The same results. So this is a story. It was a story. It was a, a village and they needed some rain. And all the adults were going out there and they were praying for rain and they were praying for rain. And it just wouldn't rain. They went out there one day praying for rain. It turned into two days they was praying for rain. It turned into a week they was praying for rain. It turned into a month and it did not rain. A little boy, around nine or ten years old, went outside and he said, Lord, my family and my friends and my community have been crying out for rain. Would you please let it rain? Would you please let it rain? A nine, ten-year-old boy went out. Next thing you know, the clouds start getting, the sky started getting dark. There was a trembling in the atmosphere. Drops started falling, and it started to rain. So everybody was looking. We've been praying for rain for a week, a month, and we didn't get any results. But this little boy came out here, and it started to rain. What was the difference? The little boy went out there, and he had an umbrella. <laughs> Have y'all following me? Follow me up there somewhere. 
So with God's conditional will, God can call you to do something or be something. But if you don't do your part, and you always have a part, that part won't come to pass because it's God's conditional will. Then there's God's unconditional will. So an example of God's unconditional will is God loves everybody. God loves everybody unconditionally. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter what you've been through. God loves you. That is unconditional. God's love is unconditional. But if there's a lot of things in the world that are conditional. So God called you to be a pastor. And you don't take the necessary steps to prepare yourself for that opportunity when it presents itself. When the opportunity presents itself, you won't be ready to do what it is that God called you to do. But the wonderful thing about God that's different from the world. Yesterday, um, me and Deacon Bob was talking on the phone. And I don't remember what he said. But he said something about, I need to just know this and know that and know that and be super sure before I step out. And I said, you know what? That's the world's way of doing things. So in the world's way, you need to make sure you dot every I and cross every T, and then you start to move forward. But in the kingdom of heaven and under God's supervision, he just wants you to start walking. And as you start walking, he will start downloading. And as he downloads, he will give you the words to say. He will tell you where to go. He will show you where to be. He will show you what to do. So he just wants you to say, yes, Lord. He just wants you to be yielding, lifting up holy hands and yielding unto God for whatever it is that he told you to do. That's called faith. So he wants us to step out on faith and do what it is that he has called us to do. We're not going to understand it all. We're not going to be able to figure out every detail. We just need to start walking forward knowing that Jehovah Jireh, our provider, will provide everything that we need as we move forward. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And knowing that God's will is conditional and is unconditional. So we have to know that the ultimate weapon is prayer. The ultimate weapon is prayer. And prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. Say that with me. Earthly license for heavenly interference. So when we pray, that is giving heaven an uh, opportunity to come down and help us here on the earth. And when we think about that, we was like, what? God needs permission? But according to Genesis 1 and 26, he has given dominion to you. So if he has given you that dominion, then you have to turn around and say, God, I invite you into this situation. Does God know what's going on? Yes, he knows what's going on. But he's waiting for you to give him an invitation so that he can intervene on your behalf. He's waiting on you to give him an invitation. you got to open your mouth and speak the word. The Bible says, let the redeemed let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So if you don't open your mouth and say it, God can't do anything on your behalf. And don't be like, okay, well, I was thinking about it. Thinking about it is not the same as praying about it. Thinking about it is not the same as praying about it. Because the Bible says that angels are hearkening for the word of God to come out of your mouth. You give the word of God voice. You give the angels the assignment to do whatever it is that they need to do. So if you never open your mouth and pray the word of God, your angels are just sitting there like cricket, 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 because you haven't given them anything to do. And then when you open your mouth and you speak death and destruction, you give demons the right to do whatever it is that they want to do. So if you're not speaking the word of God, if you're not speaking truth, if you're not speaking life, if you're not speaking things that line up with the word of God, you're speaking things contrary. So you give demons, we already talked about the principalities and the powers of darkness. So if you give the powers of darkness rule over your life. So when you open up that crack for them to come in, they're coming in strong. When you open up that little crack, if you see one mouse, you got 20. If you see one mouse in your house, you got 20 mouse. If you open up a crack for one demon to come in, he bring all his grace with him. 
and then you wonder why things are going crazy in your life. You got to speak lots. You got to speak the word of God. And in speaking the word of God is communicating with God is prayer. Amen? Amen. Amen. Earthly license for heavenly interference. God is good and he's hearkening and he wants us to pray and he wants us to commune with him. He wants us to commune with him. Let's go to James. James 5, 13 through 18. And I like this scripture because it's talking about prayer and the different attributes of prayer and the different things that people pray for. So when we open up our mouth to pray, we need to not pray amiss. We want to pray what the word of God says. So if you're seeking God for something, find a foundational scripture to attach to what it is that you're asking God for. Because God's word cannot be void. You got to pray the word. So if you find a scripture to attach itself to what it is that you're praying for, it's just a matter of time before that thing manifests. Because you got to cry out to the Lord. And as you cry out to the Lord, he comes to see about you. But if you don't open up your mouth, he's not coming. He's not coming. Think about the storm. There was a storm in the Bible, and the disciples was on the boat. And the boat was rocking and rolling, and they thought that they were going to die. And then somebody said, Lord, don't you care about us? Don't you hear what's going on? Jesus was in basement asleep. But until they cried out, he didn't respond. But once they cried out, he came up and the storm was going on. And he said, peace be still. And the storm ceased. Until you cry out, Jesus, I need you to come and see about me. I need you to intervene in this situation. He's not going to pay attention. He's going to be in the basement sleep. Same thing with blind birds. Everything got to change. Everything got to 
mouth. We take dominion and authority through the power of prayer that God has given us. He has given us dominion. Take over. Amen. Take over. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Have a seat. Have a seat. Have a seat. Hallelujah. Take over. He has given us the power and authority. It's our job to take over. It's our job to walk in and stand up and be the mighty men and women of God that he has called us to be. Amen. So in the Bible, the disciples said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. He said, okay, I'm going to teach you how to pray. Pray. The acronym for pray, write it down. P, praise. Praise. P is praise. Praise. P is praise. While I'm there, either there's two things you're going to be doing to God. You're going to be praying to God or you're going to be praising Him. You're going to be praying to God or you're going to be praising Him. Amen? It says His word shall continually be in my mouth. So if I'm not praying to Him, I need to be praising Him. Pray. P, praise. R, repent. A, ask. Y, yield. Pray. So when the disciples asked Jesus, he said, Lord, teach us to pray. He said, praise, hallowed be thy name, our Father in heaven. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. That's praise. Repent, forgive us our sins. As we forgive those who sinned against us. That's repent. Ask, give us this day our daily bread. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. That's the ask. Yield, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On where? As it is in heaven. So we on earth have to give heaven access to come down here and intervene on our behalf. Let's go to that James. James 5, 13 through 18. James 5. 13 through 18. Y'all read the scripture, and then I'm going to break it down. Amen? All right. All right, number 13. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing songs. So is anyone among you suffering? Suffering means going through a difficult time. Suffering means going through a bad period. Suffering means that you're going through some hurt. It could be physical. It could be mental. It could be spiritual. It could be financial. It could be relational. You're suffering. So if anyone says, if anyone is among you, let them do what? Pray. Let them pray. If anyone is among you, let him pray. And then it goes on to say, if anyone is what? Let them do what? That's praise. So either you're going to be praying to God or you're going to be praising God. Amen? Let them sing songs. Let them praise God. Singing hymns, singing songs, praising God, worshiping Him. You can't worship God silently. You can't worship God silently. You can't praise God. Okay, you can worship Him silently. You can be praying and crying or whatever. But if you're praising Him, praise has to be visual and it has to be some movement. Attached to. It has to be vocal and it has to be visual. So vocal, I'm going to sing praises unto the Lord. Okay, it's going to be vocal. If I'm praising God, it needs to be vocal. Or it's going to be visual. I'm going to lift up holy hands. I'm going to dance and praise the Lord. Amen. It says um, David praised God and he praised her out of his clothes. So it's going to be visual or it's going to be vocal if you're going to be praising God. Amen. Verse number 14. The word sick there means weary. If anyone among you is sick, it doesn't mean that you have to be physically sick. It means that you're weary. Am I sick and tired of being sick and tired? So it's saying that if anyone among you is sick, that they need to pray as well. Amen. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. So when you sick and tired, when you sick and tired, anybody sick and tired, anybody weary, anybody tired of going through this situation and these circumstances, 
circumstances. It's telling you that at this time, you need to come to the elders. Of the church. You need to come to the elders of the church and you need to say, I'm sick and I'm tired. I need you to pray for me. I need you to pray with me. I need you to intercede on my behalf. I need a breakthrough. I've been crying out. Who came up to him 
And he said, he said it was like, it was a blinking. He said the blink, and then he was coming closer. So he said the image was far, and he was looking around. He was like, it was white. It was real bright and white, and it had gold. And then he said it was like a blink, and this image came closer. And a blink, and this image came closer. He said then when it came into view, he realized that it was a man. So then as he came, he said the man said to him, Oliver, you're going to be all right. You're going to be all right. And so then he said, who are you? I just know my brother Oliver. He said, who are you? He said, I'm cool. He said, then he paused for a minute. He said, he looked at the man's face. Now, man, my brother Pooh died when he was four. He said, Pooh was a grown man. He said, Pooh had hair on his face. And then he asked me, he said, Teresa, how old are you? I'm like, I'm 51. He said, Pooh would be how old? I said, about 48. He was like, yeah, he had a, he looked like daddy in the face. And he told me that everything was going to be all right. And then I said, who are you? He said, I'm Pooh. And he said, you Pooh? He was like, oh, man. And he said, when he went to go hug him, he blinked. And he went back. He blinked. And he said, wait a minute. He said, no, you got to go back. You got to go back. So the prayers of the You're around. You 
want to be around somebody that can get to heaven. You want to be around somebody that know how to pray. You want to be around somebody that has access and understands the power and authority that they walk in here in the earth. Amen? So we're understanding that, that at the end of that, that is in Luke 5, 17 through 20. And in verse 26, it goes on to say, and they were all amazed yeah. and glorified God. And they were filled with fear, saying they had never seen this strange yeah, thing done like this. So they had never seen anything uh -huh. done like that. You want to be walking in your power and authority so strongly that people know when you show up, things are going to change. People need to know that when you walk into the house, the atmosphere is going to change. People need to know that you have a direct line with heaven. And as you're seeking God, things are changing. Why? Because you prayed for them to change. Because you prayed for them to change. Amen? Amen. Prayer is earthly license wow. for heavenly interference. Amen. Say that with me. Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. Prayer is earthly license for heavenly interference. So when we want heaven to intervene on our behalf, we got to pray. Prayer is believers giving God permission to intervene here on earth's affairs. Prayer is the believers of God giving him permission to intervene in earth's affairs. And prayer is giving heaven authority to, for God to perform his will here in the earth. It is our responsibility. Yeah. To seek God to make sure that his will is performed here in the earth. And as we pray and we have a conversation with God, we should be in expectation that everything that we say is going to come to pass. So it's important for us to have a relationship with God. It's not about religion. It's about a relationship. And as you have a relationship with God, all the things that religion tries to put on you, that relationship will make you not want to do those things anyway. Amen. So it's our responsibility to wow. pray. It's our responsibility to seek God for an answer. It's our responsibility to be in expectation yeah. that things are going to change. Right. He has given us power, and he has given us dominion. He has given us authority to make things change. So we as the body of Christ has to take that power and take that authority and walk in the boldness wow. that God has given us. Amen. Amen. Did y'all learn something today? Yeah. Give it up for Jesus. Because the power of the Holy Ghost has taken us. 